For the past six months, my current computer, a 2011 Mac Pro, has been having uh, issues. It just keeps freezing up randomly. I tried restoring from a backup, I tried reinstalling the operating system, and finally I even did a complete wipe of the machine, but alas, the problem kept happening. So, after months of research, watched a lot of YouTube videos, I finally decided to pull the trigger and get a new computer. The new M1 Mac Mini. Hey everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is where I create videos about digital marketing, content creation, and business growth. So if you're not already subscribed, then maybe by the end of this video, you'll consider it. And if not, listen, I'm not gonna beg you. Please, please subscribe. Why, why don't you, please? <laughs> so back to my issue with my Mac Pro 2011. It freezes a lot. And a lot of the freezes happen when I'm doing live streams. Yeah, this is what happens. The video freezes, my computer freezes, for some weird reason my audio keeps passing through, but there's absolutely nothing I can do. The only thing I can do is to actually go onto the computer itself and hold down the power button and restart it that way. I'll spare you my whole Apple support ordeal. I don't understand. Why doesn't anyone want to look at crash logs? What? If no one uses them, then why, why do you guys even make them? But in a nutshell, I finally just decided maybe it was time for a new computer. I'll be honest with you, I wanted to buy a new Mac Pro, but they are ridiculously expensive. I mean, they're just stupid expensive. I just couldn't justify it. So I kind of started from scratch and looked at YouTube videos and all roads started to point towards the M1 Mac Mini. By the way, if this is something you're curious about or maybe looking at upgrading or getting a Mac One Mini, M1 Mini, I will put in the description below the videos that I found super helpful. And shout out Tom Buck. He had some great, great, great videos that were really helpful. Now, before I set up my new M1 Mac Mini, I actually thought it might be interesting to do kind of a workspace breakdown of what I currently have set up. Um, because this might be interesting to you if you're out there and you're a creator um, or you want to kind of up your even home studio kind of game. Um, by no means is this meant to be definitive. There are a lot of these videos on YouTube. I personally love them, which is why I thought I would do this one and show you um, kind of my current setup. So without further ado, let's take a look. All right, guys, so in the interest of total transparency, I haven't even cleaned up the space. It's a hot mess. But again, wanted to show this to you um, because I'm not going to say it's the cheapest setup, but it's something that I found to be really, really useful in a number of different ways, both live streaming, videos, all kinds of stuff. So I think maybe the first place to start would actually be this desk. So this is a Vera desk and um, it can, it, it obviously you can go up or down. Um, I like that a lot, I have back problems, so I love this Vera desk, putting it on top of an existing desk. Now my next, when I do a whole office redo, I'm just gonna buy an entire desk that goes up and down, but um, this was definitely a nice middle ground for me, so that I'm not just like sitting all day, so that's been real nice. Um, uh, this is just the case for my actual um, um, lav mic. It's a Komika. Um, I love this mic. Um, it's super easy to use. It plugs right into my camera, um, also into my video switcher, which I'll show you in, in a second here. Um, now, if we work our way up, I also have a light mounted up high, and then I have some a light up here, kind of like a back hair light. And then I have an LED panel uh, back here that helps kind of provide extra lighting. Um, so when we look at this, you can even see it kind of in, in reality, what it kind of looks like. And it's obviously the video that's being produced. That's what I'm using this lighting for that. Um, I then, if we go in the back, I want to show you this. I use this little tripod grip with like bendable neck here. 
and I've connected my Sony a6000 um, this was a camera I love I love this camera um, you can probably get it super cheap I know they've made like a new version of it but it works great and this is my webcam I can't tell you how many people are like what camera are you using for your camera looks so good I mean I use this the way it's set up I can use this for meetings um, that kind of thing. So it's my default webcam is this Sony. It shoots HD. Um, it looks really great. I don't think this camera does 4k, but honestly, I don't need to look 4k in meetings. Um, I don't look that good. Then I have here mounted using an arm is the Samsung Q9U. Let's see if I can get this. There you go. Q9U. So this, I have a little bit of flexibility being able to pull it out. Um, I just use this again as my default uh, webcam or meeting mic. Um, really good. I used to use a Yeti Blue, but this mic, uh, I like it uh, a lot, a lot better. Um, on my desk, I have a Stream Deck. Love that for when I'm doing kind of live to tape uh, recordings. Um, super helpful there. Then if we go... Down here, I have too many drives. This is one of the things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna consolidate because I got these and I got these down here. It's just too many external drives. I need to consolidate. And then I have this. This is the ATEM Mini. Now, I bought this because I wanted to run my video processing externally of my computer. This is right here, my 2011. Uh, that's been so good to me, my 2011 Mac Pro. Because when this problem first started, I was like, I need to try to reduce potentially the processing that's happening on the computer. Maybe I'm just overloading it. So I bought the ATEM Mini to essentially act, or not essentially, act as my video switcher, as opposed to running all my video directly into my computer. Um, so I love this thing. I'm only using it with two cameras, but I can add up to four. Um, it's, it's a great, great device. I love it if you're looking to do multi-camera. And then lastly, what we got here is my Sony A7 Mark III. Now, this is the camera hi, that uh, I use to shoot this angle. So I have two angles during videos if I want to use them. Um, but this is, a, this is also connected to the A10 Mini. So I can just switch between my A6000 and my A10 Mini with these buttons right here. So that's kind of a quick overview, if you will, of my work, my current workspace. Now, let's get my M1 Mac Mini connected. Now, the way I'm gonna do this might be a little bit unconventional, but what I'm gonna do is connect my M1 Mac Mini to one of my monitors and keep my old computer, the 2011 Mac Pro, connected to the other monitor. And what I'm gonna do is, on my old computer, pull up my list of applications and then download them on the M1 Mac Mini. So you may be asking, why do it this way instead of just restoring from a backup? Well, the reason being is because when you get an M1 machine, oftentimes software has a different version, a different compatible version with M1 with the Apple silicone chip than with the old Intel chips. So if I were just to restore from backup, a lot of those apps would still work, but they wouldn't be optimized for the new M1 Mac Mini. Also, the whole reason for doing this is because I have no idea what's causing the issue on my old computer. Now, it could just be that that computer is 10 years old. That could be it. But it could be some other weird configuration, nefarious thing on the machine, and I don't want to bring that over into my new M1 environment. So if I do it this way, I'm at least doing everything I can to ensure that the environment is clean. All right, that's done. Now I wanna to talk to you about the downside of buying any new Apple device, dongles and docks. The M1 Mac Mini actually comes with a pretty good selection and quantity of I.O. ports. However, 
there's still not enough for my multiple cameras, my multiple monitors, and all of my peripherals. So here's the rundown of the handful of dongles and docks that I bought to make my current setup work with my new M1 Mac Mini. So one thing I did splurge for a little bit, and it seems like kind of a boring splurge, but I know that inputs and outputs are kind of at a premium, is the Apple wireless keyboard. And it's the one with the keypad on it. It's, it's, I currently have the wired version of this and I know it sounds weird, but it's kind of hard to go back to one without a keypad when you have a keyboard that does have a keypad. Seems super small. This one is Bluetooth and it has also the um, touch, the thumbprint or fingerprint sensor thing in the keypad. First of all, it got rave reviews from pretty much all the videos I watched that it works really well. Um, but first impression, the keys, and this will seem minor, but I, I don't know. The keys don't seem as tall as, as, as my wired version, which again is 10 years old. Now, I'm sure that somewhere on, the, on someone's bottom line at Apple by shaving the keyboard, the keys down a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a millimeter, save them $2 billion, but it just, it, it doesn't feel as good as my old wired one. But um, again, first impression, um, definitely connected right out of the gate, had absolutely no problems. Um, and it's very quiet, which I do like also. Um, so that's the first thing I got was a wireless keypad. Now, because the actual internal storage of the Mac Mini only comes in two options and even upgrading it more than that with Apple when you build it is incredibly expensive when we're talking about storage, I opted to get a peripheral that can expand the Mac Mini's storage. And what I got is this a AGP Tech uh, now, here's what's interesting. This is a USB hub, but inside of it, you can actually put a um, SSD hard drive. So you connect this to the computer, it acts as a, kind of gives you some extra USBs, but additionally, it can give you storage. Now, the storage that I bought with it, and again, this is first impressions. I wasn't quite sure which one to get, but um, I've had good success with Samsung. So I bought this Samsung one terabyte. Now, I do a lot of video editing. I won't edit video off this, but I have seen some videos that say I'd be just fine editing video off this. I'm gonna edit video off of another external scratch, what I call scratch disc, uh, which is a Thunderbolt. So this is mostly just for a lot of my documents, uh, Photoshop files, things like that, but stuff that I kind of want to keep on the computer, if you will. Um, and so far this worked. Um, I tore into this like a monster. That's how I tend to open things, just like a real monster here. Um, when I connected this initially though, I did have to format it. It didn't read uh, the drive, but that's pretty standard. So I just formatted it in disk utility, bing, bang, boom, and it was good to go. One terabyte, um, of storage right there. So uh, but before, the one last thing I wanna say, this is a terrible logo. This this is a terrible, that's a terrible logo. A-G-P, it's terrible. But so far, it works. Now the last thing I got to extend my display capabilities, because as you saw, I have two displays. I'd love to have three, four, five. I like to have a million displays, right? But right now I have two. Um, I got this, which is the pluggable dual display port and HDMI um, hub, okay? So this is something I can plug into my Mac mini and extend the display so I can uh, have two displays. Now, pluggable makes a, just, they have a great YouTube channel. Let me just say this. So if you're, if you're into gadgetry and hubs, go over, Shout out to Pluggable, give them a follow. They have a lot of great hubs. Now, of course, it's a first impression, so maybe down the road I'll say, this thing stinks, don't follow them. Ignore my previous video. 
But first impressions, everything like that, um, they provide a ton of solutions, particularly if you're looking to upgrade from the Intel Mac to an M1 because there are some display limitations. So they provide a, a lot of great options. The hub, the other thing I like too, is that the hub comes in, or you can set it up to be vertical. So they send it with this really nice sturdy stand right here, or you can take that stand off and lay it horizontal. So you, you have some nice options here and it has plugs in the front and as you see here, get that to focus. Come on camera, you can do it. You can do it. Well, it has plugs in the back here also. There we go. So it has plugs in the back. These are all the options. This is how I'm going to extend my display to my two monitors. So it's really sturdy. Also, this is like a solid construction. This is not like cheapy plastic. Like this is a solidly built um, unit. And the base is also like really, really solid. And it's kind of got a, a sticky bottom, sticky base here. So um, really good stuff. This is the, and I'll, again, I'll put links to all of these uh, items in the description below. So there it is. How I switched over my M1 Mac Mini and my personal studio workspace setup. Are you thinking about getting an M1 Mac Mini and have questions? Feel free to drop them in the comments. Or maybe you've bought an M1 Mac Mini peripheral, dongle, or hub, and you love it, and I didn't have it on my list. Let me know. And of course, if you found this video helpful in any way, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe.